one zero lipulsis. Zero, well, I just wonder the, whether the slip and the exclamation from Philippoussis as he slipped might just have disturbed Kovalnikov's concentration. Certainly not deliberate. Difficult half volley, Three which zero. gave Philippoussis the time to move around and hit the forehand. Good early preparation. He took it on the forehand for as much uh, for the disguise that's available to him on the forehand, more so than the backhand. Three love. Four zero. <laughs> Philippoussis. Zero. It's a lovely lead to have, but he was 5-1 up against Greg Brzezetsky in the second set tiebreak last year and lost it. Oh, and a footfall call. 6 1. On the second serve. So that's a 13th double fault for Kovelnikov and five set points for Fedopoussis. So Kafelnikov missed his chance and that turned the match Philippoussis' way. He won the third set, 6-4, and here is match point in the fourth. Oh. That didn't take long, Philippoussis winning the fourth set, 6-2, to go six, through seven, to the second round. Seven, six, six, four. Felnikov once again out in the first round as he was two years ago. But uh, Pam, it wasn't really a surprise in a way. I mean, Philippus is unseeded, but uh, he's dropped in the rankings from, from last year. Oh, a real danger. Uh, you know, you always on the men's side have two or three of these first round clashes that you just, wow. And Kafelnikov had one two years ago with Henman. Mm -hmm. So he's had a couple of tough first rounds at Wimbledon, but still, Kafelnikov seated seven. You'd expect him to certainly serve better. 22 double faults. I think he was broken seven times. It's a tough day. Mm. Yes, you can't really come back from that on it. But, but Philippoussis, I mean, for me, is a contender, even though he's not seeded. Well, he's one of these flashy players. When he hits his stride, as he did uh, a couple of times in Grand Slam tournaments, like when he beat Sampras down in the Australian Open, he can play with the best, obviously, but it's just his valleys. He, ha he has to worry about his lows. And coming off Queens, it, it, he sounded like he was so low. Sometimes when you hit that 
that low, you, you, you quickly get your act back together. And maybe he, he has started to do that. And he's got Gavin Hopper helping him again with his fitness, same guy who's helping Monica sell us. So and he looks good on the court. I mean, I like the new hairdo. And he's, he looks <laughs> we all fit. like the new yeah, hairdo. Yeah, he, he looks good. And I think, uh, you know, a lot of times with these players, with a big serve and it's confidence, it's uh, attitude. And I think he's come a long way just with a win today. You talk about the low at Queens when he actually talked about losing his motivation. He didn't even know whether he wanted to play tennis. Sometimes when you accepted that and you come back, that's often when you play your best tennis because you feel as though you've got nothing to lose. Well, it's always a bad idea talking to the press within about 10, 15 minutes of a di difficult loss. And that'll make you say a lot of things that you perhaps regret. But Wimbledon will get you fired up. If it doesn't, then you should go home. Exactly. <laughs> well, there are two matches from the show courts today. But now let's find out what's been happening elsewhere in the men's first round match with Gary Richardson. The men's defending champion Pete Sampras was in no mood to hang around and took just 83 minutes to defeat Slovakia's Dominic Habati, 6-3, 6-3, 6-2. Despite the disappointment of early exits at the French Open and Queens, Sampras was always in control and finished a comfortable winner. Eleven and a half thousand spectators were on court one and just about all of them appeared to be supporting the former champion Andre Agassi. Spain's Alex Calatreva didn't get a look in and his Wimbledon came to an end after just 80 minutes. Andre Agassi threw to the second round. Stepping into a big event, you want to have the matches behind you, you want to have the confidence, the just the, the court sense out there and and you know you, you go out there with a lot of nerves especially here you know when the when the event means something to you, you you get a little nervous going in and so the first one's always the the, the most difficult in that respect and and it was nice to uh, to just handle the situation and now now I feel like I'm into the tournament the Australian Open champion Peter Corder like Sampras and Agassi dominated his match against Javier Sanchez Oh, that's a killing shot. That really was like a rapier. Most annoyed man of the day, Justin Gimmerslob. And this after he beat Alex Karecha. What? What are you talking? No way. You have to overrule that. You have to over you're overruling that, right? What are you talking about? What are you doing there? How could you over... Alex, you said that. What are you talking about? That ball is in by this much and he knows it. You wonder what he would have done had he lost the match. Wimbledon means to some of the competitors out there today. But of course, Wimbledon ended for one. That's the big story of the day. Anna Kornikova was forced to withdraw from, from the tournament. She injured her right thumb at Eastbourne last week when she was playing Steffi Graf. She was confident that it would be fit in time for Wimbledon. And today, I'm afraid she ran out of time. And Anna today explained why. I saw the doctors and they said that it's much better for me to rest it. it. If I would rest, it would get better. So I tried to rest it, hope, you know, hoping it would get better. But I guess it didn't, so... Did the doctor tell you not to play or did you decide yourself not to play? So Anna forced to withdraw. And that's a big loss to the tournament, Pam. Well, it is. Last year, semi-finalists here losing to Hingis and with a great year just inside the top 10 now. It's very disappointing. But if ever there's a year where the women's draw can handle a loss from a top name, mm. it's this year. I mean, the draw is uh, so solid, very deep, and uh, certainly going to miss Kornikova, but uh, so many other great players out there. Yeah, I mean, looking at that, that fall, it, it didn't actually look that bad. But sometimes when you jam the thumb, I suppose it, it really really can hurt. Oh, and the thumb's really the most important thing. I mean, that's how you grip it and... Uh, but she know, actually I, finished the match. That happened in the seventh <laughs> game of the final set, but I presume after, you know, yeah, sleeping sure. on it and that, the s mm. swelling happened. Well, and I think they made the right decision. As I said earlier, with the injury with Rosetsky, he, he should go for it, whereas Kornikova, at just 17, she shouldn't mm. risk it. Tough decision, but the right one. But I mean, Kornikova is, is so good for the for the women's game, or so good for the fans. I mean, we saw last year she was such a big hit here, and uh, the fans will miss her, even if the tournament, you know, the players wouldn't. Yeah, they will. And actually, I, I suppose she's pulled out of doubles as well. Sometimes mm. these injuries, you know, a couple of days later, it's a little bit better. I, I don't know whether or not she pulled out as well the doubles because she could request a late start. But that probably is the last that we'll see of her to this year at Wimbledon. But. 
for about the next 15 years, I like her chances of being spending a lot of time out here. <laughs> certainly after that win against Garth, I certainly think so as well. Anyway, uh, talking of Garth, the centre court today, welcome back to one of its old favourites. Uh, well, not too old, she's only 29, but she's won the tournament seven times. But Steffi Graf's career has been plagued through injuries. She was forced to miss the championships last year, but today she was back. And her opponent today on the centre court was Gala Leon Garcia of Spain, who's ranked 49 in the world. Well, we join the match in the first set, and it's tough for Graf. It's for all Leon Garcia to serve. The commentators are Virginia Wade and Bill Threlfall. Fifteen. Mm -hmm. That was a lovely backhand. Fifteen. All flowing movement, coming over it. Once again, on the so of the low over the net, and no that time, like Leon Garcia hadn't quite closed in on the net, so it was a low volley. Thirty fifty. Forty fifty. Forty thirty. That's almost the first sort of quite bad error she's made. Just an exceptional rally, and Steffi knows she's caught right on the back of the line, and she cannot believe how lucky she got that this shot, which was almost the easiest shot that either of them had, failed. Now here is a crucial point. Four all break point, first set. Juice. Just didn't adjust enough for moving back a couple of yards behind the baseline. Got to lift it that extra few inches. <laughs> <laughs> 